Hi, and welcome to uh, Consider This. I'm Sharad Kutin. and Merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, of course, you've probably been uh, sharing greetings, and we had just a few days ago, in fact, the, Her Royal Highness, the uh, Pamaisuri Agung, also sharing her greetings on Twitter, something that is going to be the future of greetings, uh, all electronic. Uh, we've gotten rid of cards, it seems. And now, to help me with a discussion about Christmas and also the meaning of Christianity in Malaysia, I have with me a Father Gerard Tervarium. Uh, who is a uh, parish priest of the Church of the Divine Mercy at Shah Alam. And I know I've just mangled your name, so we can, we can begin perhaps uh, with me uh, kind of trying to get a sense of uh, the meaning of Christmas. We know there's a lot of bunting out there and people associate Christmas with Christmas trees. I mean, even here in Awani, we have a Christmas tree uh, going. Um, and of course, Netflix recently uh, aired uh, or a film uh, about the, um, the called the two popes, which is really about the, sh uh, the movement between Pope Benedict uh, to the current pope, uh, Pope Francis. Uh, Father Gerard, how do you view Christmas? I mean, kind of very quickly, what's your sense of the meaning of Christmas? For me, it would be, well, it's all of these things that people will celebrate, and it's, there's commercial Christmas, but there's also the faith element of it. And ultimately, it's about a baby born, but a baby born with a mission, a baby born with a purpose. And uh, for me, it, it's very much about a child born who is Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, born to bring us peace, born to bring us salvation, born to bring us to a new level of learning to live as human beings, uh, here and hopefully as we journey towards the next life. But um, yeah, so that's about that baby with that mission. Right, uh, but what comes after the baby, of course, is the religion, yep. the institutions, the Catholic ch Church being one of the oldest institutions uh, with, uh, with regard to the uh, Christian faith. Of course, they're also the Orthodox churches and, and so on and so forth. That other dimension of Christianity, which is not about the religion and the faith, and, but it's also about the institution. Uh, how would you like people to view th the way those two things come together? Well, I think in anything, you're going to have to have an, an institution. Institutions exist because something's got to hold things together. The reality is, however, that you know, uh, there is also the, the faith element, which is beyond an institution. I, I am a priest and I'm a part of the institution. I can't you know, run away from that. But I also have my own relationship with God that is, yes, part of that, but is also linked to, 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 my, to the fact that the institution is not just an institution in terms of a hierarchy, but also in terms of people. And I'm part of a whole load of people that have shared views and also have differences in, in the way that we look at things. So, right. And that actually is interesting uh, for those who've watched the, the Netflix series, uh, rather see the uh, film, is the, 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 the binaries that are operating in that film which have to do with conservatism and reform, uh, a, a priest who, who wants to, or a man of God who wants to uh, affirm the, the uh, the the universality of the message and its unchanging nature versus somebody who's talking about relevance and it seems to be all institutions political ones uh, religious ones grapple with those tensions for you you know the, the church has been in the limelight for for many years recently uh, scandals and so on and so forth what, how do you make sense of the um, the kind of like the rootedness of the church and the reality of human society. Well, I think the, the reality is that we need to recognize that, yes, there have been scandals, there have been good things as well. I think, you know, the, 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 the media will pick up on the scandals, but, you know, will not uh, lord the church for the good things that it does, you know, and there's lots that goes on every day hidden. But I think what we need to recognize that if there is a scandal, we need to face it, you know, squarely. We need to face it with truth. And to recognize that, yeah, there are times that we have to say, we've made a mistake. We're sorry. And we need to work towards change uh, so that these things don't recur. 
I yeah. want to ask you about this other reality of Christianity is that there are many different institutions, different traditions. Um, perhaps the smallest of which would be the, the Orthodox churches in Malaysia, then the Catholic church is quite large, the pro mainstream Protestant churches and the evangelical churches. How do you uh, manage those uh, differences? How does the Christian community as a whole relate to each other? Well, the, they are at an institutional level. They, there is the Christian Federation of Malaysia, which consists of, yes, the Catholic Church, the Council of Churches of Malaysia, and also the uh, NECF, the National Evangelical Christian Fellowship. So those are three kind of blocks that work at a hierarchy, at, at, a, at the level of the hierarchy. But I think there's also a lot that happens at a local level. I mean, in Shah Alam, there's a pastor's fellowship that, you know, recently came together with, uh, you know, for, for a Christmas celebration. And I think while and these were pastors from different churches, different yes, traditions. Yes, and, and and together with uh, with an MP who who called us all to join him in in one of the areas, and so the the, the Shah Alam churches went together, and we were quite happy to be part of that. Uh, there, I don't see a question of differences. You know, I, I I see that we've probably got a lot more to share than to see in terms of differences. I mean, the primaries are are, are similar, same actually. So I think that's important to recognize. Yes, th there may be things on the periphery that we disagree, but I think what can we do in terms of um, work where, where, where harmony can exist, you know? And, and also sometimes there may be t the need for hard talk, you know, to right. see I mean, the reason I ask, you know, uh, Gerard, is because in many ways when we talk about interfaith dialogue, we're always talking about blocks of communities and they're always Christians and Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists and all that. But we don't think about the internal divisions of those communities that, and sometimes very, very intense uh, divisions. So, I mean, you might actually might find commonality with somebody from a different faith more than somebody with, within your own faith community. Certainly. Because of the, your tendency, a more inclusivist view as opposed to more exclusivist uh, approach. Where do you think the Christian community is? I mean, has it grown? I mean, what, what are the real conversations going on within your community today? I think a lot, we're far more open towards everybody. You know, I mean, once upon a time, the Catholic Church would have been rather inward, uh, thinking of itself in, in, in a kind of, you know, we're, we're the best sort of church sort of thing. I think today we're recognizing that we need to work with everybody and not just Christians, okay? Uh, to recognize each and every person as a sister and a brother. And what commonalities can we work together with? You know, not uh, forgetting that, yes, there will be things that we, we disagree with, and we need to recognize that. You know, I mean, let's not run away and pussyfoot that. But I think we, we should work more and more uh, with what we can work together with and build on that. Uh, you know, bridges rather than walls. Okay, yeah. that's a great way to segue. We're going to be right back on this Christmas special. Stay tuned to consider this. Thank you.